Amen, amen. God bless you, family God. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. Today is Friday, so it's Friday. So you already know what's going on on the network at soulwinnerswithaz.org. Also live at soulwinnerswithaz.org. We do these Morning Devos. My name is Sam Lopez, a.k.a. Brother Sam, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And I welcome every single person that if this is your first time, I celebrate you. I should have had to clap. Um you know, audio there. So that way I, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for coming through, sliding through, hanging out with us for the short time that we have on the Morning Devo. So on Fridays, we usually talk about health, wellness, wealth, you know, something that's going to inspire you that will last you through the weekend because a lot of times we'll grind Monday through Friday. We'll grind all week, whatever that week looks like for your life. Amen. And then when it's time to lay down or <clears throat> to relax a little bit, <clears throat> which is always good to rest, but we kind of like lose the sight, lose vision of the purpose and plan that God has for our lives. So I try to inspire you. It's like a shot in the arm of faith on Fridays. So I should call this Faith Fridays, something like that, or Fire Fridays, something like that, something that will get you inspired to continue to move on and press forward to the mark that God has laid out for all of us. Amen. So we're going to look at what work is. What work really means, I know the grind is real sometimes. Listen, if I didn't, if I wasn't independent, I don't work really for um, a company or organization or anything like that. I'm independent worker. So being independent, you know, is a little, uh, it's satisfying, but it's a little nerve wracking sometimes. So I had to learn how to take a different perspective, different look at work. I had to find the purpose in what I'm doing. Amen. And once I found the purpose, and that's what we're calling this uh, Wealth Devo this morning, it's called Working on Purpose. Once I found the purpose, amen, of what's happening and what I'm doing really and what it's all about, then I noticed and I found out, and it was a good thing the way I found out, that working on purpose is because God works. Amen. And he's going to show us. He revealed that to us. I overlook it. I overlooked it for years. And but it's here. It's right in the scriptures. Amen. When it comes to God being the working God. Amen. And he has a purpose for his work. And he even worked a plan to rest for one of the days of creation. I'm talking about the book of Genesis. Uh, so that way you don't think I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the screen. I just want to uh, make sure my live is up on so winners with a Z .org as well before I move forward. Amen. And it's there. So if you want to check me out, soulwinnerswithaz.org, that's the Sell Out Radio Network. I'm there right now as well. So, Sister Wandi, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Wealth Devo, Morning Devo. Today's Friday. Um, good morning. God bless you and your family as well. So that's where we're going to be, camping out, working on purpose. Let's look at work in a different perspective. We know that God is the God who works. Amen. And because he's the God who works, we should be working. And God worked everything out for a purpose. Amen. If you look at creation, if you look at the book of Genesis. So let me um, slide over here. Let me get back um, to where I was. So this is what I wrote. This is what God inspired me to write. We talk a lot about how God is loving. We know God is a loving God. We know God is love. He's holy. He's omnipresent. He's all powerful, omniscient, right? He is faithful. God is faithful. God is just and God is true. A lot of times we forget the obvious though. We know all of that. And you come to know that. If you know Jesus, if you know God, amen, you come to know that he's all of that and then some. But sometimes we overlook the most obvious thing about him is that God works on purpose. <laughs> so the question is, are you working on purpose? Am I working on purpose? Or I'm just getting up and, you know, grinding it out for no apparent reason. Amen. Money is a good, you know, goal to reach. You know, everyone needs money. I don't know anybody on this planet that doesn't need money to do something. Money can't buy us health. Money can't buy us love. Money can't buy us happiness. Money surely can't buy us joy, especially the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. But money frees up time. Instead of working 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week, if you have a certain level of money, you could probably skip 20 or 30 hours if you have the finances to sustain you and the lifestyle that is within your means. A rich person is a person who doesn't owe all the debt and they're living this lavish life, but they have a tremendous debt. 
A rich person is a person who lives within their means, who is content with what God has given them, who works, put their hands to something, and starts and finishes whatever you put your hands to. Amen. So if we're going to be learning how to work on purpose, working on purpose on the wealth devo, the morning devo today with your bro. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, prayer requests, anything like that, don't hesitate to leave it whether I'm live or not. If I'm not live, by the time you're watching or listening to this, you can still make your comment, your concern, your prayer request. If you want things in privacy, you don't want everyone to see your, um, you know, whatever you want to write or whatever you want to text me, you could always inbox me. That's behind the scenes on all the social media platforms that you're watching from. Or you could always email me at DJ Sam Rock at Soulwinners with a Z dot O-R-G. And also, if everything else fails... And you say, man, I don't really know how um, to connect with him outside of social media. No problem. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter. Well, that's social media. But I'm also on live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. You could go sign up, hang out over there. Amen. It's a very clean, um, distraction-free website. And they have a live chat there. There's a live Bible that you could use, an interactive Bible, a place where you could take notes, a place where you could see my notes when I'm live. Amen. And there's many areas in that website that you could just hang out with me over there as well. Amen. And if you request a prayer from live.sobinerswithaz.org, it gets emailed directly to us and we'll pray. Amen. And nobody knows. The prayer request just between us, the ministry, and you, my brother, my sister, my friend. Um, I love to pray for people. I'm a prayer warrior, so send your request this way. Amen. And I believe that God will do something in your life concerning your request. Amen. So let's go for it. Working on purpose on the Wealth Devo. We're going to be in the book of Genesis. We're going to look, look quickly at the creation story. Amen. And a lot of things in the creation story we probably overlooked. Amen. I know I overlook it. And sometimes I'll take this for granted as God gives me the life of the abundant life that he promised through his word. So let's pray. And then after we pray, we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people that come to our heart and mind. If you know someone who's not on social media, but you want them to be connected with this morning Devo, with this wealth Devo about working on purpose, send them straight to live. That's so winners with a Z org. If they misspell it and they just put so winners with a Z org, they'll still be with us on the cell radio network where a lot more happens over there as well. So father, I thank you for today. Another day, a day to breathe, a day to believe, a day to receive, a day to achieve, a day to dream big. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the greatest part of our lives You are the most powerful, you know everything, and you are the capable God to do all things that are impossible for us, but for you, it's possible. I thank you for our wealth, our health. I thank you for direction. I thank you for your evidence of life. I thank you for the abundant life promise. I thank you for eternal life promise. And I thank you, Lord God, for what you have done already. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for working all things out. Amen. You created all things new. And I thank you, Lord God, that every single person that's connected now, who will connect later, will receive the newness of Jesus, the newness by way of Holy Spirit. And we will get a different perspective when it comes to work, when it comes to work and our purpose in that work that we're doing. And I thank you, Lord God, that you have satisfied our souls because you have rescued us, you redeemed us. And for all those people who are not redeemed, who are not born again, I pray that you yourself will reveal yourself to them, Lord God at their workplace, at their job, at their school, at their homes, at the gym, wherever they find themselves, Lord God, that you will reveal yourself to them because they're seeking truth. They're seeking love. So in that seeking and in that working, Father God, that you will work it out. The plans of God are so good over their lives as well. So I speak life, not death, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So let's go for it. Let's take 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as we can. When we come back, we're going to get back into in the beginning God, right? In the beginning God and see how our God worked things out, worked this whole creation out on a purpose. And he rested. He rested. So if God rested, we should rest too. But we rest in him. I'll be right back.
Wow, those 60 seconds are tremendous. Amen, they go so fast. So in the beginning, we know that God, Genesis chapter 1, we know that God created in the beginning. Not his beginning, amen, our beginning. Because God is an eternal God, amen. All the work that we see done, the skies, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, we're just starting to see things. And all our technical advancements, right, all our technology, all our smart scientists, we're just starting to skim, not even skim, the surface of the millions and billions of stars out there, trillions of stars, the galaxies, the galaxies outside of our galaxy. It's crazy, the expanse that God has created. Amen. But scientists, if they're honest, they're going to have to tell us that everything looks like it's in order. Everything looks like it was on purpose. Everything looks like the design that we're living in, the earth, the moon, the stars, everything that's in our galaxy, it seems like it has a purpose. It seems like every creation had a purpose, has a purpose. So God worked on purpose. So therefore, the clue is, amen, what I'm trying to inspire you with, and I'm inspired by, is we need to work on purpose. So in the beginning, God created, right? God was productive. He was producing, amen? He did something on purpose, for purpose, and had a plan for what he did. He worked. Amen. But listen, I can't create a universe. You surely can't create a universe either. So let's stop speaking to the universe like so many of my friends and family members do. Let's speak to the God of the universe. Amen. And find our purpose working for him, working in him, and let him work through us. Amen. In the beginning, God worked. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God was productive. In the beginning, God was on purpose. So if you read the first pages of Genesis, we see God engaged in the work of creating. I'm a creative. Amen. I'm on social media. I plan things out. I do things. Amen. I write. I do podcasting. That's that's being called a creative. And I got that, I got that creativeness. The creative ability from the creator, amen, inspired by him. I'm not saying that you need God to be a creative. I'm saying that I am inspired by the creator to create what I do. So therefore, I find purpose in my work. You can find purpose in your work. If you're working, you know, whatever, a job, a nine to five, maybe even a, a, a 12 hour shift, you know, a swing shift, and you're not happy and you woke up again and you're like, man, I got to go back to work. Or you have this mindset of thank God it's Friday. If you have this thank God it's Friday mentality, that means you're trying to get out of something into something else. You're trying to get to the weekend. You're trying to get to your rest. And you're more excited about your rest than the 9 to 5. If that's you, this, this message is for you. It's a freeing message. It should inspire you to take what you're doing. Amen. Wherever God placed you, he placed you there for a purpose and a plan. You might be at a horrible job under horrible leadership, under horrible management, but God has you there for a purpose and plan. It could be for the manager. It could be for the janitor. It could be for that one person that needs the message of the gospel. And then once you reach that one person that God set you up to be there for, amen, he will release you. He'll probably release you. He'll leave you. He'll leave you in a better situation. Amen. As soon as you accomplish your work on purpose. So God created in the beginning. Right. So you see that all through Genesis. We see in the beginning of Genesis, we see God Genesis chapter two and three. Right. What work in this verse is the exact same word used, described ordinary human work throughout the Old Testament. Genesis chapter three, the Hebrew M.L.K.H. We translate that work. Amen. So all, all the lazy brothers and sisters out there, listen, stop being lazy. Work. The, the Bible says that if we don't work, we don't eat. Oh, but I inherited money. Oh, but I hit the lotto. Oh, well, you got to work at something. Do something creative. Do something who that will inspire someone else. Do something that will help somebody else. Do something. Do something. If you're not doing nothing, amen, you should expect nothing. If you're doing something and you're working on purpose, you should expect creative, um, your imagination, the creative works of your hands to prosper you, to prosper someone else, to help somebody else. Amen. So we're going to work on purpose with a plan and a purpose. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Today's Friday. So we're doing a Wealth Devo today. We're talking about the purpose, working on purpose, what it is. Amen. And God, you know, the obvious, I overlooked this so many times that God is a working God. He worked, 
Amen. And then he rested. But that's Sister Joyce. Amen. Let me give you a heart over here on the Blaze Bible Studies. And uh, welcome to the Wealth Devo on this Friday. So, the claim that God, the God of the Bible, works, that's unique. Among all the world's religion, a lot of the world religion says that their God is, you know, all powerful, that God is almighty, but their God has done something and has ceased to do it and it just is. Our God showed us that He worked, Amen. He created, He produced, He sustained, He maintained, Amen. And remember, He created us. But before He created us, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then later on, he created what we see on the screen, mankind. <laughs> he created us. And that was a, a tremendous work. You know, the medical um, people, you know, uh, brain surgeons and all, they still can't get the fullness of how God created the brain, right? Our ears, our eyes. We're not robots. We're not moist robots. We're not, um, you know, uh, artificial intelligence. We are real people. God created us fearfully and wonderfully. We are made. God created us awesome, an amazing creation. Amen. We have conscience. We could talk. We can make decisions. We make. Uh, we have free will. Amen. We all look different. We all speak different. We all have different thumbprints. God did that. His work is incredible. His work is amazing. His work is perfect. Okay? So... We have a God who works. Every other religion says that the God, small g, created human beings to work and serve the gods. But the Bible says God himself worked to serve us. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I, come, I came to serve and give my life as a ransom. Totally flipped the script on what other religions think about their God. We have a God who worked for us and to, wanted to serve us. He did not have to. Just remember, God did not have to do what he did through the work of the ministry of Jesus the Christ. He didn't have to come and, you know, humble himself like that. What he did do, amen, is contrary to what other people and other religions say their God did. Our God, only in the scriptures will you see God himself worked to serve us. That's a radical truth. That's a foundational truth. And that's how we, as God's image, we're his image bearers, we're his creative work, we're his resemblance here on this planet. We should think about our work differently today. We should think about how God created us, amen, so we could create something with our very own hands, with our very own mind, with our very own voice. So the fact that God, the God of the universe, Elohim, Yahweh, the fact that the God of the universe worked means that work is not a necessary evil. People think that um, they read Genesis and say, okay, we're cursed. And because we're cursed, now we got to work and sweat. Well, actually, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that the land, amen, was cursed or meaningless. Work is not a means to an end, amen. Work is not meaningless. Work is something that you could have dignity in that you could take pleasure in, that will help serve someone else and serve your family and help support your family financially, right? So meaningful. Work is dignified. Work is meaningful. And God in and of itself is working it out. More than that, work is God-like and the way we reflect his character to those around us. A hardworking, born-again believer, a man should stand out than any other hardworking person on this planet. Man, I gave him all that work. I gave her all that work. And not only did they do it, but they did it with a smile. They did it with compassion. Because remember, we don't really work unto man. We work unto the Lord who gives us the reward. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23, around there. Amen. Check it out for yourself. So when people ask, well, you, you know, do you rest? Do you go on vacation? I know I'm getting, I'm setting myself up for eternal vacation, amen. I know I have to sit down and rest. I know I have to take vacation, amen. I'm, I'm privileged to take a vacation if I can, amen. But that's really not on my mind. What's on my mind is working unto the Lord, doing things and getting it done so that others will get to uh, the presence of God, amen. 
So everything I kind of do is related into getting the gospel out there. Amen. When I'm working, when I'm delivering my meds, when I'm online doing online marketing, uh, when I'm t- speaking to people, when I'm DJing, when I did something somewhere, someplace in those things is going to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. You can bank on that. You can believe that. Amen. So let's look at it. Let's look at this whole Genesis situation. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. I just want to point something out. If you believe in first mentions, do you believe in first mentions? Let me explain what first mentions is. Wherever you see God first mentioning something, amen, that's the order. Do you believe that? I, I kind of believe that. Amen. Um, I haven't studied out all the way through, but I believe it. Let me give you two examples. Over here, you ever heard when Jesus said, you know, let's go baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Great commission, that's part of it. But first mention, you realize that God was mentioned first, then the Spirit of God, Ruach, Elohim, the Spirit of God was mentioned second, right? Now, fast forward to the virgin birth of Jesus. This is amazing. I just learned this the other day. Virgin birth of Jesus, right? Remember, Jesus was without sin. He wasn't born through a, a, the flesh of a sinful person. Mary was impregnated by a Holy Spirit God. So here we go. God sent an angel to tell Mary that she was impregnated by a spirit. God, Holy Spirit again. Then Jesus came, right? Out of the situation he wasn't born from flesh and blood. He was born by spirit. Amen. He is God made, you know, in the flesh. And he came to serve 33 and a half years down on the cross. What did Jesus say on the cross? To you, I give my spirit, God. Amen. So we see the order was still maintained and sustained by Jesus the Christ. Amen. And that's a work of God. The whole process. Amen. So... I'm just saying, if you believe in first mentions, it's interesting if you look at the scriptures, if you look at creation uh, according to the first mention. Then God said, let there be light. And guess what happened? There was light. He spoke it. And God saw the light, that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. That's still happening. That happens every day. Amen. God called the light day and the darkness night. God did that. That was his work for a purpose and a plan. And evening passed and morning came Marking the first day. Now, I'm not going to go through how, you know, some people say that was uh, a day's like a thousand years. Yes. But according to what we read right here, it looks like it was a day that we can understand. I could be wrong. It could have been thousands of years before the next day and the next day. Um, that's not the issue here. The issue is that God's working things. Verse number six. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And. That is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky. Now you see God's creating and naming what it is. The evening passed, the morning came. So all the way until verse number, let's see, because of time, I can't read it all. Verse 28, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Now God created the male and female who created them, the Bible says. Be fruitful and multiply. That means there's a work. Something's going to happen if these people are going to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. That takes work. So when we're working, working on purpose to fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. My daughter, I always tell my daughter, she's so afraid of insects, spiders, and everything. She'll jump from them. And I'll be like, you know, you have rain over those things. Those things are terrified of you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And they're running from you. You're you're running from them. Amen. We have rain and dominion over the animals of this earth. We are not equal with the animals. We are above the animals. Amen. God said it. That's God's work. I know people will try to convince you that we're just, you know, superior prime from primordial beings or we're just animals at a, a, a different level, the same as a dog, same as a, a gorilla. Don't don't believe that. Obviously, if you ever had a conversation with a gorilla, connect with me. You know, we could talk about that. I'm talking about communication like this. You ever sat down at A, they have intelligence. They have, you know, they make decisions. They drive cars and all that. Talk to me. Amen. You know, I could be corrected. But I've never seen that. And I don't think that's ever going to happen. 
Verse 29, then God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food, a work of God. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Everything that has life. God took care of everything that has life. <clears throat> he created something for them. And all of that happened. The, verse 31, then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. So on the sixth day, man was created. All of that to say that God did this work as a service to every single animal here, every single bird, every single creature. He laid down their food, laid down their, their kind, amen, of the same kind, amen. Um, there's no talk about aliens there. So my friends who believe that, you know, aliens was, was God and just, there's really no talk about that. He spoke, God spoke about the sky, you know, the space, all that stuff. So if there's aliens, then God created those aliens. But we're not talking about aliens. We're talking about mankind. We're talking about the work and purpose of God's hands. So God being a God of love, he, he already is God who loves. Amen. Before we were around, the question still stands that I always ask people, who was God loving before he created us? Amen. We had God the Father, God the Spirit, God the Son, right? We had all three in one. I said it in the order that you see the first, the first mention. Amen. I know we're used to saying God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that's fine too. That's true. I'm just saying that if you think about it through the first mention, you're going to be saying God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son. Amen. And Jesus is coming back. So he's going to finalize everything um, that's been said in the scriptures. But I'm going to back up off of that. Amen. God was loving himself, if you think about it. <clears throat> he was a God who loves. He had a loving God. Right. Um, you have the lover. And then you have the God of love, the one who created love. Then you had God, um, you know, spirit, one who shows us the love. And then Jesus, the loved one. Amen. So he was already loved. <clears throat> he put us in a mix, I guess, because that was his will to make mankind. Amen. Obviously, we're here. Image bearers of God. Amen. Not all children of God, image bearers of God. And therefore, now he wants, you know, to show us love. He served the purpose and plan. It was eternal purposes of God's daily work. And he still, the thing is, the weirdest thing. We rest. He rested on the sixth day. We need to rest. Oh, excuse me. On the seventh day, he rested. We need to rest. Take some time to rest. Amen. Um, if God works six days, I believe, you know, it's good. It's good for us to work the six days, but we need a day of rest. Um, people who work out, they tell you, your body needs rest. You can't be working out seven days a week, you know, pounding out weights and aerobics seven days a week, two or three hours a session. Your body's going to crash. Your body's going to break down. Is actually going to reverse what what's supposed to be helping us is going to reverse. So if you're a workaholic, I gotta raise my hand and humble myself. I gotta be careful. I'm a workaholic. If you let me work, I'll work all night, all day. But I gotta stop that. Amen. Um, and I have um, to pay attention to what the body's telling me. Amen. That's the wellness portion. That's the wellness part of me. Pay attention to what your body's saying. But we need to rest. When we have a purpose of what we're doing, amen, then you're going to realize that God is all of that. He's faithful. He's trustworthy. He's holy. He's loving. He's omnipresent. He's all powerful. He's just. He's true. But we also know that God is a working God. He works things out. God works on purpose. So the question <clears throat> remains, are you working on purpose or are you just doing your, your normal, normal? Every day is the same old, same old. Listen, if you're a believer in Christ, there shouldn't be no boredom in your life. There shouldn't be no same old, same old in your life. Every day is a new day. You know, for unbelievers, people who don't believe in what Christians believe in, you know, every day for them is a new day too, right? I hope you know that the calendar doesn't go backwards. The calendar goes forward. Amen. If you Google calendars all the way from here to whatever year they already figured it out, you're going to see that it's already those days are already positioned. Those days are already looked at as being real. Amen. So yesterday, I can't go back there. Tomorrow, I don't know what's going to happen. I have right now. 
And the purpose that I'm using my life for right now, I'm working on purpose, is to reach a soul with the saving message of the gospel. And to show you that our God of heaven and earth, amen, he worked. And he's still working. Everything is being held by God. The moon, the stars, the earth, the sun. If this, if the if the sun or the earth shift just like any kind of way, uh, if it shifts one way um, to left or to the right, we're going to burn up. If it shifts another way, we're going to freeze. So God is holding everything together. Is God breaking a sweat? I don't think so. Amen. Do we break a sweat? Absolutely. Amen. But we're image bearers. He did a purpose and plan for his work with his own hands. We have a purpose or we should have a purpose and plan when we work with our own hands. Amen. It's all to give glory to him, our maker. So I'm out of here. I'm out of time. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope this helps you. Read the book of Genesis chapter 1 for yourself to see the creation story right there. Amen. In the first couple of chapters. And you will see what happened up to chapter number 3. Then you see why. Um other things happen in our world, in our lives. So God bless you all. Have a great weekend. I thank you for hanging out with me. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.